All kind of people should get together with small kind of people should get together and talk to each other. Good evening. This is Positive Choices and I'm Menti Love. Today's program is going to be about black history, and my guest is Awuso Slater, and he's going to talk about black history. Uh, Awuso, talk, what kind of uh, things do you have to say about black history? First and foremost, let me thank you for having me here again. It's always a pleasure being on your program. And I am from St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the Caribbean. And I want to talk about black history from that perspective. And I dare say I want to talk about our history from the perspective of the Caribbean civilization. I say our history, your history, my history. this drum or this music just throws me back in time. Throws me back in time in that place in the Caribbean, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Spirit. And when I feel that spirit, I always think about that word, spiritual Baptist. You see, spiritual Baptist is a group a religious group of people, a religion in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But they didn't just get the name Spiritual Baptist. It was a long and ardent struggle. And as I go back now in time as a little boy, I could almost feel that evening when the sun going down, when the crickets in the area, stop. And as the light of the evening sink, it began to get busy. A lot of activities. There was van loads and van loads of people getting out at this point. They were so colorfully dressed. And as a little boy, I said, uh oh. Point of Cyrus, have a shouting. And then the bell began to ring, disturbing the silence of the evening. And you could hear the, the bell for miles off because we didn't have much cars, not, much, not too many vehicles. And so you know something big was about to happen in the evening. And as the sound of the bell died down, I he started to hear the sweet singing. I started to hear like a welcome song. But it started with no words in the beginning. Sounding so sweet. That was what they call the welcome song all the way from Africa land, coming to hear them sing. All the way from Africa land, coming to hear them sing. Coming home, coming home, coming to hear them sing. That religion have a, had a strong, still have a strong element of Afrocentricity inside of it. But man, talk about colors. When they array, when they gathered in that place and began to sing and began to move, I see all kind of exuberant colors. 
people in red and black and green, people in gold, people in silver, people in black, and every conceivable color you can think of. But not only that, I noticed that people were just as all different kind of characters. I see one man look like a captain of a ship. One look like a soldier. And many women look like African warriors. Some look like nurses. And it's so going on just like, is an array, a profession that these people represent. And they began to sing. And they began to sing so sweetly, so moving, so spiritual. And at a different time, they would broke out into like, into a chance. And then you could, you could almost feel the vibration outside. While outside the door, there were many visitors and people from the neighborhood. And some were laughing and some were giggling. And some were even mocking. Some would say, oh, they think they believe they're better than anybody else. They dress up so, because they dress up this and dress up that and carry on and carry on. And some of them must be a bunch of hypocrites. But the people inside you, spiritual Baptists inside, would just look outside and say, come inside and taste the sweetness of the Lord. And they would carry on with the singing. Now, this was in the 70s. But the story began so long before that. As a matter of fact, that I get so involved and so interested. At one point in time, I really wanted to write a book on the spiritual Baptist. So I set about talking to people, some of the, the, the chief pundits inside of the organization in the religion. I remember one time talking to a man named Duff James, Reverend Duff James. And he said, boy, this religion here went through fire. He said, do you know that this religion was outlawed from since 1912? And it's not until 1965 that the religion was unbanned. I said, oh my Lord, what happened in that period? He said, ah, son. If you were caught in any meeting, any gathering, worshiping, you could have been arrested and placed in jail. And sometimes you were even beaten to participate in this religion. We came a mighty, mighty long way. He says, as a matter of fact, there is a man in Georgetown in the countryside named Bishop Sam. He went to jail so many times for this religion. It was no easy road. So how could that be? He said, boy, back in those days, in the, that was in the period of colonialism. And the churches, the established churches at that time, thought we were heretics. Thought our religion had no substance. That it had no basis, but that wasn't the truth. We are a Christian-based religion, but we choose to worship God how we please. And how dare we do that in that particular period of colonialism? The churches had joined and had joined forces. And so they aligned themselves with the colonial government, and that was how we were banned. And I said, oh, my Lord. And as I reflect and I look, and I look at the different things that they do, I see they have baptism. And I like the baptism. And they would tell me, look, 